right. I'm streaming. How does it look? Hopefully, we'll have decent speed, upload speed today. Um, <laughs> I think Aslan's in the house. He's at least on uh, Discord. Um, yeah, I told you. I knew you were there. Oh, man. So I, we're gonna we're gonna. I, so I came up with this. Actually, I think I did this yesterday. This uh, musical review, this notation review. So it's 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 pretty difficult, but. Uh, everything I put up there. Hey, Patrick Russell, good to see you, man. Hey, Tal, good to see you. All this time, Tal, I thought you were a dude. <laughs> By the way, I'll advertise for you. Tal is an engineer in mixes, so reach out to Tal if you, uh, you can find her on, uh, Discord. And, uh, um, if you want her to mix something, you can hear her mixes there too. Um, but the the um, the reading I put up here, um, these are all things that are very likely you would see, and it's very much arpeggios and chords. So um, uh, sometimes you might see uh, the letter C instead of the chord C. Like if we look at uh, bar twenty one. That's a C chord. It's a middle four string C chord. It gets easier. And what I what I did with some of this was I separated like at 17. Um, at 17. And you know, 18 is it's the same chords that you see at 21, but instead of being stacked, all played all at once, like with fingers. Um, it's arpeggiated. And I've got different arpeggio patterns. I've got, uh, well, actually, one, two, three, and four, technically, maybe more if you count the bottom line. Different arpeggio patterns, meaning finger picking patterns. Um, and uh, the first one is kind of just a, like that kind of thing. The second one I really like is. Some of these you're going to probably memorize long before you'll get reading them. Um, hey, New Zealand, I'm assuming. <laughs> this is the crazy language. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> good morning. I got a moderator. That's good. I think Bruce is in Maine or something. Now, I may be a little bit um, hap slappy. Uh, because I didn't get any sleep last night. I fell asleep around five and got up around seven. So I just could not get to sleep last night. But, um, uh, but we're gonna, I did this yesterday. Um, so it's only it was only up in the uh, this this review I did it yesterday and the PDF has only been up in the, at Discord for like not even oh nice see well <laughs> you can't sleep either so you, so Rob has the problem I have last night I could not sleep oh my gosh oh pin the Discord link thank you yes boss Holly's my boss I work for Holly. All right, so here's the here's the Discord link. This is where you can find all the PDFs. All right, so if any of you are new, uh, uh, Patrick, if you want um, to start working on your reading, I don't know where you are on reading. I you know, and 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 I, I uh, on the Discord, I gave a pretty lengthy list of reasons to learn how to read, and it's harder. The older you are, the harder it is. I think just like anything, like learning a new language, but. That sometimes people prove me wrong on that. Um, I'm going to, I'll pin it here. Hold on. Um, 
My my chat doesn't move as fast as Rick Beato's. Man, Rick Beato's chat just goes <laughs> like it's, it's crazy. Um, it's probably a good thing I don't have so many followers. Uh, Jack Lloyd, good to see you. Oh, mixing. Oh, you mixed it. Yeah, beer and Jack. Did you do like a boiler maker or something? Um, but uh, there's lots of reasons to learn to read, and uh, the reason I. I say, I, I, I said in the same sentence, I said, you're too old and you're never too old. <laughs> but basically what I mean by that is, you know, it is, some, I feel like it is harder to learn something new the older you get, right? Um, the brain is not as pliable as it was when you were 15. My students that are 15 years old, kind of how I wrote, came up with that lesson, um, seven tips for older beginners that most of you discovered me through was uh, the realization that 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds, 15-year-old kids tend to learn, like, pick up stuff faster than I can teach them. And uh, then I would have 45-year-old teachers or students, and they would have kids and jobs and wives and houses and mortgage payments and whatever, saving for college or whatever, and they just didn't have the same amount of time to spend on it. So that it was, you need to really maximize your time, your efficiency and practice, and I, I rarely saw the same kind of growth in those players, obviously, than I saw in the young players. Um, that said, my brother-in-law, Beth's oldest sibling, she's one of six, she's the youngest of six, her oldest sibling retired from Indiana to Ecuador. And um, uh, he's doing, they're, they're semi-retired, he and his wife are doing marital counseling down there. Um, in Spanish, and they've only been there in their six years, I think, and they're already like crazy fluent, you know, in Spanish, and uh, it's pretty amazing. And he was in his sixties, I think, or sixty when he moved. They moved down there, so, um, and they they're back here quite a bit, but uh, but they love it down there. So, uh, although COVID was really tough because things were really locked down there. Um, oh, Indianapolis, my hometown. I haven't been in Indianapolis in quite a while, to be honest. I mean, I'm, I can't think of a reason to go there now. Um, but um, so, so the the reading thing, uh, you know, again, it's 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 kind of one of those things where we just started doing it here. I mean, and and like I said, if you're if you if you go to the Discord and join up, if you haven't joined up, it's free. That's a free link. Um, you can see all the lessons I've done on this, okay? I'm scrolling back through all these lessons, and there's there's the low E string, and here's the reading the A and the D string, and then here's the E, uh, B, D, G, and D review, and then there's the G and the D string, and um, then we had chords on the, you know, I, basically every PDF is like another page of a book. Um, this is how I like to learn and is also how I like to teach. I like to create. Um, I feel like when um, Beth and I were just talking about this yesterday, um, one of the things I did when I was in high school was I, I there was no college that taught what I wanted to learn, which was um, how to be a session guitar player. So I, I created my own curriculum and tried to figure out what do I need to know uh, and there was a huge gap in my knowledge when it came to gear. That was one thing I didn't think I didn't even it didn't even occur to me to like acquire great gear. Now, had I done that, I wouldn't have had any savings. And if I didn't have any savings, I would have been able to move to California. So it was kind of a trade off there. But the 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 um, but I, I did all sorts of reading exercises. I bought like uh, flute books so I could practice reading um, high ledger line stuff. I would I would sight read hymns so I could practice reading treble, treble clef and bass clef at the same time like a piano player, which doesn't make a lot of sense for guitar, but it it was great for my reading chops. Um, but there are other reasons to read. For one thing, it's a, it's a, all, all the um, everybody every musician learns to read except guitar players and drummers. Bass players even generally turn, tend to learn to read because. Because it, you tend to only have to read one note at a time, whereas guitar players, we get stuck having to read single note and chords. Um, but trumpet players, flute players, violin, violinists, you know, ev everybody generally tends to learn to read music. So if you want to interact with another musician, if you want to do a wedding with a flute player, 
you're probably going to have to have something that you have in common that you can you can uh, uh, play. And you could do lead sheet stuff. Um, we're going to talk about that too because that's actually probably more common than reading single notes is reading lead sheets. And I can sh we're going to talk about that. Um, and then if you want to play classical guitar, you know, 90% of the repertoire out there is not in tab music. Probably 99% of the jazz repertoire out there is not in tab. Um, and um, so, you you know, if you, can re if you can read a little bit of music, you can do a real book gig. And uh, you can show up with four musicians you've never played with before and get paid a lot of money to do a wedding. <laughs> like, it's just amazing how you can do that. Everybody has the same book. You just open it. Well, let's do uh, all the things you are. And it's like, okay, cool. And we all play it. And people come up to you and say, hey... Oh, Bruce is here. Hey, Bruce. People say, hey, how long have you guys played together? And we were like, look at our watch. And, you know, it's like, oh, about an hour. <laughs> so that's, it's amazing. You know, the re reading really gives you that, uh, that freedom. Uh, reading is also great if you want to be a pit in a pit band. You can make, you know, 100, 200 bucks. Well, not 200 bucks generally. I mean, it depends. But even in a small town, um, when they put on musicals and things like that, my, my wife is from a small town in Indiana called Greencastle. And her, 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 uh, her stepdad, uh, did um, musicals, like four musicals every summer, and they had a, a, a band in there. And so those musicians had to be able to read, but they all got paid because it was a paid gig. Um, but yeah, I mean, even a small town, you could have a, a you know, a gig uh, playing, um, reading music. So um, if you were to play in a big band, I did a lot of that kind of stuff back in the day. I actually was in big bands specifically to work on my reading. Um, and so a lot of that was, uh, they call it chopping wood, you know, a lot of, you know, like, that kind of stuff. Um, so usually, you know, and there might be some syncopated rhythms and things like that. We're going to get into syncopations now that we've gotten to eighth notes, we can start working on syncopations. Um, there is nothing syncopated in this chart here. So, like I said, this music here that I, I did for I did yesterday for today. Um, so it's up on the Discord. You can download the PDF. More than welcome to print up as many copies as you want. Um, if you want to write notes in there, there's a lot of arpeggios. So what you might want to the first thing you might want to do and uh, bar twenty five is not arpeggios. Those are scales. Um, but you might want to look at the string groupings. Okay, if you can figure out the string groupings. Uh, the first two lines, bar one through eight, um, those are um, uh, one through eight is um, uh, is on the top three strings. Nine through sixteen is for the most part on the middle or no on D, G, and B. Yeah, and Patrick, it's funny because we use charts at Shepherd. So at my church, we definitely use charts. Now, uh, Alex, when he plays with us, he memorizes the songs, uh, usually just the lead lines and things like that. But me, it's like, I, you know, I'm doing music all week long. So for me to remember a song that we haven't played in three months, what the lead line is, it's nice to have it written there. And the other thing is we, it has the melody in there, so it's easier to keep track of where you are in the song. Um, and so even if you're not playing what's written, you can you can see the singer singing it and go, oh, okay, we're here, and then you don't get lost. Um, the other thing is when we stop and do a communion, um, if, if Sheila's not there, like this weekend uh, coming up, Sheila will be out of town, our sax player. Uh, she tours with uh, Dweezil Zappa and uh, uh, Colin Hay from Men at Work. Uh, so she gets to play the, the Who Can It Be? Now she gets to play that on sax. <laughs> it's so awesome. Uh, she, she loves it because she played that stuff in the 80s and top 40 bands <laughs> when she was in college. Um, but, but when Sheila's not there, so we don't have a sax player, there, then I'm, I'm going to be playing the melody over the communion thing. So being able to read the melody, you know, I could memorize it or I could just fake it. But um, having the melody written there is really makes it easier for me. Now, again, I'm already a good reader, so um, that's not a, a, too much of a problem. Now, the the... the the music that I wrote for today is is stuff you're likely to see. Maybe in classical notation, some of this is classical. Some of it's kind of poppy. Uh, some of it's kind of Beatles-y. Um, like at 33. Three, four. I'm 
play pretty fast, and then it goes to A minor seven to G to kind of an F two to an e, uh, e minor second with an F sharp, which is kind of weird. But that's why there's an accidental there. But anyway, um, I just like the sound of those two. I like the sound of those two chords against each other. So I wrote that in there just to be kind of fun. Uh, Twenty five is. It's just a C, partial C scale, uh, but then it goes boom, ba, boom, ba. So bass chord, bass chord. I mean, the great thing about music notation that I love far better than uh, than tab. Okay, tab is good for like, man, where did he play this or how did he play this? It's good for that kind of stuff, like tabbing up, looking up guitar solo tabs. Like, how did Eric Johnson do that? You know, um, but. Uh, the thing about music notation to me is it looks like what it sounds like. Whereas tab doesn't always do that. Um, tab does to me doesn't always look like it sounds like. Um, like for example, if we look at bar 13, that's basically a, a, a G triad with a D in the bottom. So it's just basically D, G, and B open, okay? And then you can see that G string doesn't go anywhere, right? It's still, it's still up there in the middle. And but the, you go up a fret for the C and up two frets for the E, you get that. And then look, I just slide that up two frets to get the next chord. You get the F sharp and G. There's our cluster. It even looks like a cluster right there. Uh, those two, uh, you actually literally had to move the G over so you could fit the F sharp there. Um, and so a cluster actually looks like a cluster in music notation, but in tab you would have seen a four and a zero, and that doesn't necessarily mean anything. it could be. It could be a lot of things, you, but this definitely looks like a cluster. So, um, <laughs> Bob, that's all right, Bob. Good, good to see you on. on. I know you're, you're. Uh, I know you had some. Uh, yeah, you've got um, bad gallbladder. You just got. It says, um, are. You, Uh, bu, 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 bu. Did, you, uh, did you say you have a surgery on Thursday? Is that what I've read? I do see these posts. Uh, bu, bu, oh, in the lesson. Oh my gosh, that G, the G scale. Okay. <laughs> so, Lena, thank you for your good comment. Uh, Lena really appreciates these uh, lessons. And, and man, did I mess up. So, I don't know how the first thing happened. Okay, so so I upload the video and uh, Bob, you saw it and you said, "Oh, it's good." And I wasn't patient. I didn't wait for everybody to kind of chime in. I'm 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 pretty lazy, aren't I? I have you guys do my homework for me. I, I do the I do uh, the video and all the all the graphics and everything, and I just upload it and I'm just keeping it basically unlisted and then giving you the link on the Discord so you guys can check my work. Well, Bob, you missed the 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 accidental, accidental copy and paste of the, I don't know even how I did that, but somehow I copy and pasted the music at the end of the video that I used to show off the, the scales, um, how they might be used. One example, you know, and um, I accidentally dragged those in right to the beginning of the video, like a 22 seconds in or something like that. So who caught that? I, I forget who it was. It was, I think it was Aslan. No, Aslan caught something else. Or maybe it was Aslan that caught that. Uh, so then I'm like, oh, dang it. Okay. So I set the video to private. And then I went back to my to to my iMovie, which is where I do it. And I saw the mistake and I deleted it. I rebounced the video, right? And I named it G Scales again. Just the video I named out for my desktop on my laptop. Okay. Then I went to YouTube and I go to download the video. And instead of dragging that video in there, I dragged the same video in again. The exact same video I had the first time. I I went, you know, you know, open and it opened the folder that I had the bad video. I should have deleted the bad video, but I didn't. I, for some reason, it was just still. So I dragged that, uploaded it, and I'm watching the video to make sure. And I'd already made it public. So there's now two notifications for that stupid video. And I was like, oh, are you kidding me? So I made it private. I deleted it. 
I went and found the right one, uploaded that one, and it, and then I was like, okay, I'm good now, public, make it public. Three notifications for the same stupid video. I'm sure I lost probably 10 subscribers. When, that, when I do stuff like that, you lose subscribers. So, and then that's when people start saying, oh, by the way, you called those C scales at the end. I'm like, oh, no, I can't change. I could change it. It's very, very easy to do. And then re... Uh, Render the video, which is doesn't take that long because it's not it's about an eight minute video, and then re uh, upload it, which doesn't take that long, about another fifteen minutes or something like that. You know, I I can do that while I'm doing other stuff, which is what I do, which is part of the reason why I'm I'm multitasking too much, which is why I'm missing these things. Hey, said Arthur, good to see you. Um, so. Um, anyway, that's the, that, that was that. And I will try to, two, I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to try to grade my own work a little bit better. Um, I, I can't believe I did the copy and paste thing thinking I was going to save myself some time and it ultimately didn't. Um, the other thing was, uh, I, um, I will, before I make it public, I'll leave it private for a little longer. So more of you can help me out there. And plus it gives the people on discord the first look at a video. I, I think I probably left it up there for a day and I said, okay, that's good enough. Bob didn't catch anything. Bob was the only one that chimed in. <laughs> you didn't catch it. Or if you did, I, I did, I missed it, missed it that you did. And, um, so, you know, that was the saga that was the, 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 the stupid, uh, G scale video. So I will probably do the D scale next. I'll do major, I'll do D, A, and E maybe, and then I'll start to go to minor scales. And I will do mixolydians and things like that. It'd be fun to do those. <laughs> Catherine, yeah, yeah. I know, it's funny, because I just totally trying to say, oh, like, okay, I can, oh, because it's, like, it, the, you know, the end section, you know, it's a lot of, there were a lot of things, and I figured, okay, what I'll do is I'll copy and paste that, and then I'll replace all the elements. So I, I, I make, there's some continuity between these videos, right? I wanted to have some continuity, and... I had a lot of continuity. They called the G scale C scales like the C scale video. So that was pretty con continuitous. <laughs> I'm a continuitist. <laughs> so uh, anyway, all right. Hopefully, hopefully you're laughing instead of crying with me. Good morning, Gary Schultz. You missed my little story there. Yeah, Bob, you missed it. That's all right, Bob. You got an excuse. Yes. Now, here's here's the thing on the on this. It's up to you, uh, John. Um, in fact, you brought it up. There's probably three ways you could play that first bar. We could play it um, using our fingers, like thumb. So you just put your first finger on the C note, okay? And that's open G, C, and E. And then come back to C, and then back to G. It looks like it sounds right. So that's the first bar. Very, very elemental. Now you can play with your fingers. You can play actually thumb, two fingers. You can play actually you can play a lot of ways. But anyway, you can play three fingers if you wanted to. You could play it with a pick uh, using uh, pure alternating down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. It just depends on how fast it is, but really fast, I might do that. Or you could do what's called uh, efficiency picking. So it'd be down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up. And that we, it's not, we don't call it efficiency picking. What do we call it? Uh, but always picking in the direction of the next string. Okay, it's the kind of the Boy Scout motto of being prepared. You're preparing yourself for the next note. Okay, so I'll probably use my pick though because I feel like it's a little louder uh, for you guys. So you see that? And then it's just those three, same three notes together. So here's the thing though, you gotta remember the, the tempo. So it's if you're going a slow quarter note, it's one, two, three, four, and one. Two. Those half notes are forever at this tempo, okay? So if you're going to play, you, you have to remember that, that those half notes are four times as long as those eighth notes, right? Because one half is four times bigger than one eighth. It takes four eighths to equal one half. 
So if I were to play this at a relatively fast tempo, it might sound like this. Okay. And I'm just playing the first two bars. But if I were to play it at a slower tempo so that I'm not stressing out too much in the first bar, three and four and one, two, three, you can read a book for in between those chords, okay? But you need to be consistent with that because that's part of reading. The rhythm is part of the music too, not just the notes. I could play. But that's not what this is, okay? I'm only reading the notes there. I'm not reading the rhythms, all right? Dennis, hey, we got all three moderators. It's been a while since I think that's happened. What is bar 17? Bar 17 is... It's basically... It's, it's basically Landslide, right? By, uh, by Fleetwood Mac. It's kind of like Landslide. That kind of chord progression. And so you can see it's middle four strings. You can just see... You can, you, it's, it looks like it sounds. Okay? And these are all notes you know we've learned... Now we've gone, you know, we've done it now. We've gone through every note. We've got all the notes here. We've done them all. So, again, if this is, and then some. I mean, I didn't even, the only thing I put in here was an F sharp. Um, I didn't even put a, a, any flats or anything like this. There's one, there's a couple F sharps in there. But, um, uh, yeah, so this is, these, these musical examples are very, very much like something you would already play. And so I would recommend, one thing I would always recommend, printing up a couple copies so that you can write all over one of them and then try to sight read the other one, okay? So they're not using, like if I, you wrote G, C, E, C, G, C, you'd be tempted to read the, the letters instead of the notes, right? So totally fine with you doing that and, and, and basically uh, making, taking, turning this into a, an actual quiz there will be a quiz on this. So you, you make your own quizzes. Again, this is all about make. See, I'm, I'm creating. So what I've done in this is I'm creating curriculum. And when you do, when you create your own curriculum, you learn so much. So you can, you can teach yourself how anything uh, by, uh, but you have to be, the, you have to learn what to teach, how to teach it, and you learn it. It's like this triple attack on your brain that really hammers it home. Because they say, you know, you retain 5% of something you read, but you retain 60% of something you teach. So if you kind of become the teacher on it and go, I want to create a curriculum, which is what I did for my, you know, desire to be a, a Los Angeles session guitar player stuck in Indianapolis in high school going, I want to live in L.A. and do session work. Um... I created my own curriculum. I created my own college program that I took myself through. And like I said, I used, used to practice eight hours a day. I had a whole routine that I did. And very much of that, very, very much of that played into what I do. Now, a lot of times I'm way overqualified for some of this stuff. If I got handed a chart like this, I would be, at first I'd be like, oh, wow, that's a lot of notes. And I'd go, oh, wait, oh, it's all really obvious stuff. Okay. All right. So let me take another sip. I got two hours of sleep last night. I didn't fall asleep till five. Really? I went to bed at ten. <laughs> That's a lot of laying there. Paul Meyer, good to see you. It's all right. I, good to know. I, it makes me warm and fuzzy to know you there, lurking. To completely new. Fifteen minutes. Okay, so you can see. Okay, and then the second bar is just those two chords together. Now remember those. That chord, that C chord. That's a C chord, technically. Uh, because it's going to happen the last bar there. See it? But we're going to change. Now we're going to go G, B, F. So we got a G7 chord. And then back to the one chord, C. Okay? Then, you you don't want to... You could play it like that, like individual notes, right? Might be That might be what you want. Um, but more likely, it's going to be something you want to bring out. See, guitar, 
um, on piano, they would have a little sign there saying pet or something like that. Or you could put a, put a, um, uh, shoot, um, a tie over all eight of the note, notes, say, in bar five. If you put a tie over all eight of them, what that means is they want it all to just kind of, in, in single notes on violin, it would mean something like, like that. They want you to hammer on. Same with guitar. If you saw that tie over three different notes, like uh, E, F, G, they, they want that to be played like that, um, not individually, okay? So I'm hammering on, all right? Um, I, didn't, I, I didn't mess with that, but basically, if you did put a tie over that, or one way to notate, Thank you, thank you, Holly. Um, oh. <laughs> Unthank you, Holly. Uh, uh, but one way you could notate that, and so notice how they're all ringing out together. So I'm playing a little mini, little baby F chord. Shouldn't be too hard. This one's not easy, but this one's not too bad. And then it goes to that C chord that we already did. And literally half of reading is almost always redundant. So if I were to have a whole song, keep in mind, this is like, I combined like seven songs right here, okay? If I were to have one song, you might have this bar of music, okay? That first bar, you might have that show up in 20 of the bars on this page, which means what happens is, see, you look at that first note, you see a G, right? I mean. For, you know, it may take you a second, but that first note is a G. And you learn that, and you learn and you memorize that that's a G, and you memorize that G's here, okay? But what happens is that phrase here, okay, if it happens five, six, seven, ten more times on this page, you're gonna see that phrase almost like it's one note. You're gonna see it and play it as a phrase. I think, Lena, you're pretty good at reading for piano, correct? You know what I'm talking about. Like you'll see a phrase and you just read it, and you don't even you don't even need to look at you're not even looking at individual notes. It's kind of like looking at a, a sentence that you've read before. Um, it's like having a speech in front of you that you've practiced a lot, um, and you just got it there just in case. That's kind of what ends up happening, you know. And I've seen that bar of music in lots of pieces. Some, if not that exact thing, something very similar to it. Okay. All right. So we're on bar five. We got the F. And then back to the C, which is the same as bar one. And then to the G7, which is the same as bar three. And then the C chord. And this time it's four beats. So if we're going this one and two and three and four and one, two, three. Four. It's that long. Okay. All right. So that's the first phrase. You can see I put a double bar there. I think I did the double bars correct. Yeah, they look good. The next one's a different, a different musical idea. Okay. Hey, Max. Good to see you. I'm just trying to catch anybody that jumps on and make sure I say hey. Oh, you're still a slow reader, even on piano. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't know. I, boy, I know some great readers on piano. Holy cow. And you're reading two staves, at, you know, two stabs at the same bass clef and treble clef. I'm like, wow, I know how you do it. Um, so the next, um, the next one, okay, let's look at that first note. That's open D, and then we have G, open G, and open B. So that's pretty easy as far as left hand's concerned. <laughs> we don't even use it. Um, and notice, but look at the pattern. It's not the same pattern. The other one was down, down, uh, right? A kind of a four beat pattern. This one's a little different. It's like it's like a three pattern, two, three, kind of like a waltz. But then it doesn't. It does only two notes. And the reason we did that is three plus three plus two equals eight, which is how many eighth notes we have in a bar. So if we were to play that over and over again you can practice that and that pattern it runs that pattern that string pattern okay runs throughout that entire line okay bar 9 through 12 
It's the same pattern all the way through. And all I did was I then I added. Now here's the thing where you go, oh, I, sh I need to play F sharp with a, with a pinky and a D with a, you could do that. It's actually kind of almost like a good exercise. It's hard, it's hard to go back and forth between those two chords. No, you can just slide it up. As long as you don't, as long as you get the music out and it sounds good, this sounds better. Okay, so play this with me. G, so we're gonna be at bar 13. Let's do bar 13 real quick. The, those three strings open, so fourth, third, and second string, and then E, G, and C. So make a little C chord, not in root position, that's the third and the bottom, that's fine. Okay, then just slide it up two frets. And I could call this a couple things. I Basically what I'm thinking here is I'm thinking G major seven. In other words, what I'm hearing going on is maybe while we're playing this, right, or this, the bass is just playing a G the whole time. Right? That's what I'm kind of hearing. But you could hear Here, even A minor, because there's no bass in this, in that, in that phrase necessarily. So, okay, so at bar nine, we're gonna go. And then add the first and second finger. And then up two frets, fourth string, third string, second string, fourth, third, second, four, three, slide back down two frets. And then open, then C, essentially, and then slide up two frets. Get that distance, that cluster. Okay, now here, check this out. We're gonna go D, G, B, D. So that's a little weird because the next chord is gonna be this. So I'm playing the, the first chord, bar 13, that, but I'm adding the high G on top. And again, print up two copies. You can write down open, 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 third fret if you want. I don't care. Um, but then don't write on one of the copies so that you can be essentially um, uh, reading. So, okay, so I'll touch my face. Sipping a fence. Uh, let's see. I played on Apex Legends, so all the guitar you hear on Apex Legends, that's me. I'm working on some other stuff coming up. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, okay. Thanks, Rob. I'll check that out. I don't want to do it right now. If I play it on on the live stream, then all of a sudden I'll get flagged for copyright infringement or something like that. So, all right. So, Holly, you get some drinks there. Um, all right. So, so again, the bar thirteen again, just three notes, and again you can play with your fingers. Totally fine with that. And then, so open three strings there. Then two open one. And you slide up two frets with that G string open in the middle. So you play that F sharp. A beautiful distance. But by itself, it definitely sounds distant. But you add that D note, and it sounds pretty. It's so, so weird. But seconds are like that, major sevens too. If I were to do the inversion, the inversion of that sounds dissonant. But if I play it in the context of a chord, it sounds beautiful. Isn't that weird? There's, there's, there's there's allegory in there somewhere. <laughs> I, just, I, don't, I, don't have the, I don't have the awake cells to actually come up with it. So, all right. So the next uh, bar seventeen, 
Um, if we look at 21, we can see the chords written out in stacks, okay? Uh, and so those, those can be kind of daunting. Uh, but like I, like I said, that first bar, you, you know, if, it, if you were playing a song and that was, like this is really seven different songs right here. But if I were to, you were playing one chart for one song, you might see the same bar 20, 30, 40 times in a song, um, you know, especially over the one chord or something. Um, and um, in that scenario, uh, you would get really good at reading that whole bar. You would just memorize, oh, it looks like this. It's like seeing the word onomatopoeia and going, oh, that's the word onomatopoeia. The first time you saw it, you'd be like, onomatopoeia. And for Catherine, onomatopoeia. <laughs> I think it's Catherine that has the big, <laughs> has me on the big screen. Okay, so, uh, but um, same thing with these stack chords at 21. It, you'll just see that as a C chord eventually. You'll read it enough times, you'll be like, maybe those four times right there is enough. You get it again at the end of the line. Uh, but basically, if you, if you arpeggiate those out, so all I'm doing is plucking the middle four strings of a C chord, and then I go B, D, G, D, which is a very standard thing to do on the guitar, right? And then I did A minor seven, so it was a little easier, but I could have I could have done an A there. I probably should have done an A there, but you'll notice that that G is in there. And then back to G over B. And here's the thing, if you were handed this chart, you might very well have C written over that, G over B, and A minor seven, and G over B written over that. So you might be reading those things more, and then using the arpeggios as kind of, oh, they want this kind of thing. So you're really looking at above that. So I, I don't have a problem with that. That's that would have been pretty, had I done that. And we're gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk about, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about reading lead sheets, uh, which would be like, um, uh, Real book uh, charts. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll 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 deal with that later. But but yeah, we'll, we're going to talk about how to read um, a real book thing. Um, also, I'm going to uh, uh, do some rhythm charts so we can you can look at see what those look like. Um, and but we have before we can really do that, we need to start looking at. at um, uh, we need to start learning syncopations, and when we do that, we may only be playing one string open. You know, I may just, you know, maybe something like that. You know, we may be doing one note just like drilled in your head like a dentist drill. Like, like as if John was drilling, drilling us, so. Oh yeah, Gary's providing the Tom command steps. <laughs> Utter, that's dope. I see. I don't remember that one, but okay, I have said that a few times. <laughs> Speaketh thy adoration to some. Yeah, that that. I should I should see Alex there at some point. So yeah, Gary, Gary's the uh, well, he's the, the town scribe and the town Moses. Okay. So, um, so if we look at 21, then it's just strum C chord. And one observation, an A minor seven. Oh wait, oh I did A minor there. See that one I did A, so I, che I cheated. A minor to G over B, two strums, and to C. Just, you don't even need to read them, just look at them and notice how there's four of the same chord, right? You don't even need, know, need to know that's a C chord, but you can see that they're, they're identical. It's like some kind of test, one of those, what, which one is different, you know, in this row. And then you can see where it changes. Notice what, what changes. That's, again, the beauty of music. Note, tab, you wouldn't really see the harmonic movement. So, for example, it's a great, this is a great, be, <coughs> excuse me, because, um, there are four voices here. You can think of these four voices as being soprano, alto, tenor, bass, S-A-T-B. That's what they refer to in choirs. So S-A-T-B, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, top down, okay? So the soprano might sing the C note, so you can follow the soprano line. Right? 
look at the alto line. The next line below the melody, the top note, is going to be the alto line in a, in a, in a four-part harmony. Um, and notice here, well, now see, dang it, I changed it on that A. I was going to say, notice it doesn't change anyway, but it does. So on the A minor, it changes, but check it out. Uh, uh, see, uh, it would be... Uh, now, I don't know if you ever saw my video. Gary, this is a, a, a thing that uh, you, you might be able to use, although you pretty much are a solo artist. But one of the tricks that I do, I call when I'm trying to come up with a harmony with a singer, like if I'm playing guitar and like when my wife and I would do music together sometimes, to come up with a harmony, I would sing a string. So if I sang like the G string, um, I'd just pick a string and sing whatever notes on that string, that note is going to work as a harmony to whatever the other person's singing. It doesn't really matter what they're singing. Um, or you could sing the, the D string, so that'd be. It's a great way to come up with an instant harmony that's built into what you're doing on your left hand. So um, that's a good little trick, and this this is kind of that, okay? So we'll now look at the what is the what is the tenor doing? Okay, the tenor, again, soprano, alto, tenor. Tenor is the higher of the ma male voices. And I'm kind of a baritone, which is somewhere between the bass and the tenor, so uh, I'm, I'm not really much of a singer anymore, but uh, not that I ever was. But here's what the tenor's doing here. La, 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 Okay. And so you've got, the cool thing that's happened is you've got contrary movement. Particularly between the first chord and the second chord, we have the, the sopranos going C to D and the the, uh, the tenors going E E to D. So they're both going to D, but one's going up to D and one's going down to D. Okay? Contrary mo movement is great. Much better than parallel movement. Parallel movement is one of those movement, one of the, you know, music theory things you learn early, early in music theory that's a bozo no-no. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> a friend of mine made up the term bozo no-no. It's a no-no. Bozo no-no doesn't really mean anything except I think he just liked saying it. He, actually, that, that guy's an English professor now, which is funny. But, um, uh, but, uh, it, but if you didn't have parallel fifths, you wouldn't have rock and roll, right? Even parallel octaves are a no-no, okay? But you couldn't have rock without it. So that that rule is kind of generally thrown out the door because most music being created today has parallel fifths and octaves. Um, uh, but the reason they said that was because they wanted it to be more interesting. Don't make it boring. Don't go C to D. Go C to D. Okay. Which, by the way, this D shape, I notice it. I notice that uh, John Lennon likes this E chord. Like for E, he would play this. Alex seems to think it's because they were doing doo wop back in the day. So he got really good at that kind of stuff, uh, that chord shape. But he grabs that instead of this. He grabs this one, which is interesting to me. I was watching some live videos of the Beatles the other day, and I noticed that. I was trying to actually find... I thought he was doing it for the E chord. He might. I just haven't found that one again, but I was looking for a video. Because I wanted to I wanted to say, hey, you know, this is... Here's a, here's John Lennon's alternative chord voicing um, video. I may do a video on that, if I can find it. So... Uh, you're having a hard time with your RC50, too, Gary. If you learn any wonderful tricks, please share them. Uh, somehow I hear... Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd much rather sing her, but it doesn't work until I figure out the signal chain with my RC50. Yeah, I don't know anything about those. Um, and pure harmonies sometimes aren't the best, right? Like, if your melody is... Okay. Say that's your melody. 
you set it to thirds and it knows you're in the key of G, so that's cool. It plays a B. But that may not be the harmony you want. You might want, instead of an F sharp on top, you may want that. You, right? So I'm not sure if you can set it to, you know, how you set it, or if you can, I mean, if even if you set it pentatonic, that wouldn't work. Then you'd have a you have a major second there. See, that wouldn't work. But you hear that's a better harmony. Um, that's almost like a horn harmony kind of thing. Pure pure thirds is again, it's all this kind of boring parallel mo movement. And you may not want an F sharp at that moment if you're playing over a G chord, because it makes it sound like a G major seven chord, right? So yeah, those those harmony machine things. I know they I know they can be smarter. You might be able to program like the scale and pull out the F sharp so it doesn't ever go to F sharp. But then what if you go to the F chord? You want you're singing a D and you want the F sharp. So I I don't I'm not sure. I don't, I've never worked with one of those. You know what's better is just get a friend to come and join you. <laughs> It's always better. It's always more fun to do music with other people. I mean, I, I, I trust me, I've done a lot of solo gigs. Uh, and generally, now that I think about it, they're not that much fun. I mean, I don't know. I, I, Gary, you're having fun. I, I, when, I, when I think of solo gigs, I think of playing classical guitars at wedding, wearing a tuxedo, and sitting in the sun with my nice guitar, hearing, it, hearing the wood dry as I play. Yeah, that, that's, those are my memories of solo gigs. But, but you're doing fun solo gigs where you're getting to do a lot of songs. And I have friends that do that. I have a friend that did it on a cruise ship. He played solo guitar on a cruise ship. It just took, just took, uh, it just took requests. And the funny thing was, he he developed quite a repertoire. And I think I think that so much like you you think oh he took requests that's dangerous. And there you know you're gonna say hey I, I don't know that song or I've never heard that song or whatever. But and people are gonna stump you that's for sure. But for the most part, it's probably the same like. 50 requests on every cruise, so you know, I'm really a, a problem, but... Okay, speaking of Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, um, 20, bar 25, we're gonna get, we're just gonna do a pure scale. Um, and what I did here was I, I did a pure scale, just to kind of give you a break, because I felt like, okay, you guys, I, I'm giving you too much weird reading right now, but, and then, kind of this umpa thing. Okay, so a bass chord, bass chord, and again, that's a very common thing to have written in written form in a song. So that's why I wanted you to see that and go, okay, well that I've seen it now. Now when you get it, you can go, oh, Tom showed that to me. I know that. And again, I'm. It's you could write C chord over that. It doesn't need to be specifically. You want that note, but it doesn't necessarily have to be these three. It could be four. It could be these three. Right? I mean, if I were playing it with fingers, if it were classical, that would be different. Right? Then I would be, I could be more precise. But if I'm using a pick, it's very difficult to be that precise, especially at a high tempo. And it's not critical. But if you're, if you're using fingers, that's different. If it's a classical piece, it probably is fairly intentional. They want those notes. Okay, so the, the next scale, uh, bar 27, is A, B, C, D, E, Okay. Yeah, band's playing it. Yeah, hopefully soon, band, yeah, squirrel, right? Um, Hopefully, bands, uh, you guys can start playing together again. I mean, <laughs> we, we've been playing at Shepherd since last July. We were just like, ah. <laughs> they had a mask mandate and everything in, in L.A. City and L.A. County. But the DA and the, the sheriff both went to our church, and they both said, we're not going to prosecute anybody at your church, so, at any church. So they didn't. Um, but, yeah, so... so And that's an A minor chord, right? Now I'm putting my second finger down as if I'm, I'm hitting that, but I'm not. But it's just, 
it's more a lot of comfort, you know. If I were, again, if I were reading this, if it was a classical piece. Now, I'm not even sure how I would finger that. I would probably have to use my fingers for that scale and then hit that last note with a thumb or the first note of the next bar. Bass chord, bass chord, okay. And then I do a little G segment of a G major scale. And then I go G, B, D, G, G, B, D, F natural, which creates a G7 kind of sound, which is very strong, the five chord, the five seven of one, which is C. All right. Yeah, Bob, I'll be praying for you. Thursday is your surgery, right? All right, I'll be lifting you up and just pray for wisdom for the doctors that they get everything and they don't leave a scalpel in there or their cell phone or one of their ear pods. <laughs> okay, well, so we'll be, we'll be making sure, we'll be praying for that, everybody, right? And then... Um, uh, and then a fast recovery. I'm not, I'm not familiar, you know, with the gallbladder thing. I, uh, why do we have it? Why did God, <laughs> that might be part of my prayers. God, why did you give us a gallbladder? It's like, if we don't need it. Um, but do you have to take medication after that? And then is that going to have side effects and make you feel funny? And, you know, well, probably you're going to feel funny after first. You might feel lighter. How much does the gallbladder weigh? <laughs> 8 a.m. Okay. Eastern. Okay. So that means I got to get up at 5 a.m. All right. I, I can't guarantee, but hopefully it won't be too long of a surgery, but maybe. <laughs> yeah, Holly, there's a little lag on the chat thing. Yeah, right. um, oh, if I sip, do you get to sip, Holly? I uh, know. No, no, that's not an infraction. But I just touched my face so you could. And Sam, if I remember, your dad is still with us, right? He's like 127 years old or something. Am I correct? I'm like, I think Gary, your dad is still with us because you went fishing with him, like I said. And I know it's getting to be a challenge. My dad was mentally fine until the day he died. My mom wasn't. <laughs> Wait, depends on how many marbles you have in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a pretty standard surgery. But I know it's always scary to go under the knife, <clears throat> no matter what. <laughs> I'm a meanie. Yeah, I'm a meanie. Yeah, so I'll just have to give you more reasons to... Okay, so let's look at bar 33. This is a little, I like this little harmonic thing. It's kind of an E minor second to F2. So E minor 2 to F2. Okay, and what I'm doing is I'm bottom string open, uh, maybe first finger on the B note there, and pinky on the F sharp, and an open G. So we have a cluster. You don't see the cluster as well when it's the, the chords are are drawn out like that, right? Up in bar 14, where we have the, this chord, you can really see the cluster because you had to move the G chord, G note over to make room for the F sharp. Um, but on this one, because the notes are individual, you don't really see that. But that's that first chord. And the next chord, bar 34, is F, C, F again, and open G. So you can see the commonality there is there's a G note in both of those chords. And you can see the movement, the voice leading again. So we have parallel fists, which is a no-no, right? We have the F, go, I mean the E going to F, and the B going to C. So there we, we, have, a, we have a power chord there. But on top we have, and then, we have, so we have contrary movement, we have static movement, we have parallel movement, all three of them in, in probably one of the reasons why I like this voicing. Four. And it does that twice. 
It's another one of those times where you can go, oh, I just read that, so I know it. Oh, I just read this one, I know that too, okay? Because bar um, 35 is the same as bar 33, and bar 36 is the same as bar 34. So, you, you, they'll, they'll, again, that's very common in, in a piece of music that you would have the same thing twice. It, does, it happens all the time. You, know, you have the same thing 100 times in a piece of music. If you're doing 99 bottles of beer in the wall, you will. <laughs> so... Um, uh, or you're not doing 90 bottles, if you're playing 99 bottles, you're singing it. If you're doing 99 bottles of beer on a wall, you probably won't be standing by the end. So, um, And then the last, the 37, the phrase is... I don't know. It's not a, that melodic idea is not particularly common, but I like it. What would have, would have been more common if I had done something like this? I'd gone. If I'd gone to like an E7 chord or something, that would have been more common. I should have done that. That would have been more pop. That's a harder one, <laughs> but that's kind of a cool pop idea, having that G note ring out on top until it gets to the G sharp. It's the same thing. Walk and run. That's it. Progression actually is still is actually pretty common in pop music, particularly Latin pop. Very very common in Latin pop, which has crossed over quite a bit as of late. A lot of Latin pop. That, boy, a lot of that. Uh, um, uh, shoot, what's the style? Is that the snare drum? I can never think of the name. Uh, not Nortenia. Uh, it's more it's more Caribbean than Mexican. Uh, anyway, somebody's gonna know it. Somebody's screaming it at the computer screen right now. Holly, how many people do we have on here? We, I mean, it was it was pretty good at first. We got up there pretty quick. Okay, well we're not bad. We got up to twenty five. Oh, I think we even got higher than twenty five. Twenty six recently. So all right. Well, we're we're good, and we're almost done with this. So now the the only thing, the reason I showed you this next one, I I, I like I like tenths. Okay, a, a tenth interval is a third up an octave. Okay, so check this out. I'm going to play a G major scale since that's what I wrote here. Okay. In fact, my new video is shows you this scale. Okay, I show you three different G scales: one for beginners, one for intermediate, and one for advanced. So if you haven't checked it out, um, here let me pull it up. Really quick, <laughs> and I will. Ah, ba -dum -ba. Man, I'm tired. Uh, okay, here's the new one. Of course, and ignore the names of the <laughs> scales at the end because I just totally slept through that one. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I missed it. It's just. You know, I'm getting lazy when it comes to checking out these things. Get shareable link. That's what I want. Okay, so here's my latest video that I just did. And um, I had to upload it three different times. So I bet if I go to analytics and it's, I look at how many... Uh, it's still not bad. It's, it's okay. 500 views in a little over a day. I mean, I wish it would... And it's starting to go up right now, too. Um... Oh, it says, you know, oh, that's, I've never noticed that before. Unique viewers, 80. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Returning viewers, new viewers, okay. Revenue. Uh, so far, I've made 58 cents off that video in one day. 
<laughs> so you can tell I'm not in it for the money. Uh, but I like getting it. I love getting it. I, I, I like it when I find a new uh, kind of uh, uh, series that I can do. Uh, so it makes it real easy for me to conceptualize the next few videos. Um, I did a couple of unboxings that I didn't release uh, because I don't want to do an unboxing where I'm not completely, or not. I don't have to be completely thrilled with the instrument, but at least relatively thrilled with the instrument. Both the two new unboxings, I was like, yeah, these are okay, but I don't want to promote, I don't want people to think I'm recommending these instruments. Um, so. Okay, so a tenth, all right? So we have do, re, mi, fa, so, da, da. Okay, so if we count up 10 notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We came up with these. That's uh, Blackbird is tense, all right? Um, I also, when I think of that song, I think. Uh, <laughs> the theme for Brokeback Mountain. Uh, let's see, the, what, what's a, what's a, what's a, oh yeah. It's a Muse song. It's really pretty. Um, it's almost all tense. Uh, it's really, really fun chords to play. So I, I wanted you to kind of see how tenths are written and what they look like. And tenths are like wide intervals. I also like thirds. Like I'll do thirds. I held up a two for, why did I hold up? <laughs> well, because there's only two notes. So, you know, usually you do, like, if you're doing, like, uh, some kind of driving rock thing, you might use power chords. Right? But I really, I love the sound of the thirds. And if you've got a clean sound, it works. If it's gainy, you're going to want to go to fifths. But if it's clean, if it's got a lot of distortion, the seconds are going to get, the overtone series is going to be pretty abrasive. But fifth's not, not so bad. Uh, but if it's a clean sound, it sounds really good with thirds. You can go minor thirds. But tenths are great too. Um, and so so what I did was here, I wrote G, there's a low G, and then the B up here, and play them together. That's simple. So it's like one, two, three, four. And then A and C, which is also a tenth. Four, and then B and D. Four, and then C and E. Top string open, four. So you can, and you can see by looking at it that it's a wide interval. It sounds like a wide interval, right? This is what thirds sound like, fifths. That's the, again, the beauty of music notation is it oftentimes looks like what it sounds like. Um, so in, in my opinion, it makes it almost e easier to read than tab. A tab is very difficult to sight read for me. And I, and I write, I've written a lot of tab. Um, through the years teaching guitar lessons, it's, you know, if I'm teaching Blackbird, I'm not teaching it in music, I'm using tab, okay? If I'm teaching this to, the, the idea is to get kids playing guitar and get them, you know, excited about it so they pick up the instrument as much as possible. And music doesn't necessarily do that. Music's more utilitarian, all right? Um, and um, even if you don't, you can't read this, you can kind of see that it's it sounds like what it looks like, and that that is a that is a victory right there. Um, yeah, it's like two tablespoons of coffee. <laughs> exactly. Uh, fifty-eight cents. Yeah, right. Yeah, fifty-eight cents. Well, let me let me refresh that page. Maybe it's up to fifty-nine cents now. Oh, who's texting me? Oh, oh yeah, yeah.
So, um, so yeah, so the, the, um, that to me is, you know, and I came up with a list. What did I put it on? I think I, I was it Tom's text chat. Yeah. Reasons to read, learn to read music, uh, international universal language of musicians, uh, to play jazz. Um, although like I say, many old school jazz players couldn't read music, not a note. Uh, who was I just watching an interview with? Oh, shoot. And couldn't read note. Um, classical players almost all know how to read music, okay? Uh, you know, 90% of the music out there for classical guitar is not in tab. Um, and again, one of the things about tab is it's, there's no rhythm notation with it. All you're getting are the, the positions, which is great sometimes when you're like, where did he play this? Um, but the rhythm notation, you, 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 I've seen tab where you see tab and it's like, like say bar nine is zero, 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 zero. And it would have the stems. Okay. Right. You've seen tab with music, with, with rhythmic notation written attached to the notes. If you've seen that, you're already halfway to reading music. It's like, you're, cause music is two parts. It's the notes and it's the rhythms. And um, so if you've already got, you know, the, the flaw of tab is there's no rhythmic notation. So you have zero, 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 and a new line zero. You could read that as zero, dun, 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 quarter notes. You don't, you don't know that really it's dun, 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 right? But in music notation, it would be very obvious to you. Um, hey, 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 eighth notes, <laughs> Julie. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, see, another reason to learn to read music session work, obviously. Um, and, and trust me, you can do, I know uh, Tim Pierce can't read music, and he does a lot of sessions. Doesn't do movies, TV shows so much. I mean, he does, but not as much. Usually if it's like a band thing, he'll play on stuff like that. But um, he does a lot of records. But, but this, this one of the things is like, well, if, if it's a music reading gig, a session that they need a lot of notes, you know, and I've got, I've just, you know, I've been doing a lot, I do a lot of that. I mean, this is, this is some notation, just stuff I did just two days ago, Saturday or something, or maybe Friday night. Um, you know, uh, see this? And it's pretty simple rhythmically. Da 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 Pretty simple rhythmically. The composer that wrote this oftentimes will <laughs> musically lulls you into think you think you know what's coming next, and then he turns it around on you, and you're like, oh wait, uh. so you really got to pay attention. But um, I had to punch in a couple times where I just was like, oh man, I keep forgetting that he does. It's doing that. Um, but <laughs> but Tim Pierce isn't going to get called for that. They're going to call someone like me. Um, so you're eliminating, you know, in in the guitar world, you're eliminating almost more than 50% of your competition if you can read note, music notes. Um, uh, I use, yeah, I use music in church to read melodies for, for hymns and instrumental sections and things like that. Um, I've been in pickup top 40 gigs where you can just, they have a book and you just, they give you the book and you just read the thing. I've done pickup big band gigs where I just show up, didn't have to do a single rehearsal and I, which is great because rehearsals don't pay anything. And I, they need a guitar player and, oh, we got a book. Okay, cool. I can read. I'll jump in and I'll jump in and they say, okay, we're doing, here's the set. Put the charts in this order. You put the charts in order. You play the, you play the set you get your check and you go deposit and then done. Uh, uh, and then pit band gigs too, which like I said, even small towns have pit bands for like music theater, musical theater, high schools sometimes. High schools are put on musicals, but they don't have musicians that are good enough especially guitar players. That's a big, they may, you, you may do a high school musical, um, not high school musical, the TV show, but high school musical, like, you know, if they're putting on an, a thing of, you know, I don't know, Pippin or whatever, I don't know, pick I mean, Oklahoma. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the drummer, the drummer knows how to read and the bass player knows how to read and the sax player and trumpet players, they all know how to read, but no guitar players at the school know how to read, so they're going to have to hire a guitar player from outside the school to come in and, and read. So now you got a gig, you know, for the next six nights or whatever. So it's yeah, it's it's definitely worth. Again, I'm, I'm talking to people that want to be giggers, and that's not the majority of you. Most of you are beginners, and that's fine. We're gonna we're still going to talk about syncopations 
And here's the other thing. Reading music, I didn't even put that in there. I should add it. But reading music um, allows you, helps you to be able to write music. And I think if you write music, you're better at reading music too. So if you come up with a song idea, Gary, if you're writing a song, you have a finger-picking pattern idea or there's a melody you like, try writing it out in music notation. Like I said, you can go to this um, website and print up printable sheet music. So you don't need to buy sheet music. You can just print it as you need it. Blanksheetmusic.net. They've been there forever. So, um, paste, boom. Um, it's a great place. You can also print up tab paper if you need it. Um, but... Uh, I would suggest if you're writing a song or have an idea or whatever, try writing into music uh, because you'll be able to put the rhythms in there um, and it, you'll be much more likely to remember it than if you just write it on a piece of you know, notebook paper or in tab or something. You're probably more likely to be able to go back to it later and go, oh, oh yeah, that's right. That's how that melody went um, or that's how that riff went. You know, uh, And I mean... I would even challenge you. I think Lena, are you still there? I definitely, Julian, I would challenge you to write a melody a day. Um, and just, you know, um, uh, and uh, one thing you can do is write a melody a day. Do that for a month so you have 30 melodies and then play them. So you're now you're practicing your reading. So you practice your writing and practice your reading and see if you have any tendencies like redundancies in your writing, okay? Uh, that's one of the things I really try to, to when I'm writing music, I really try to avoid um, doing something I've already done. And so a lot of songwriters, singers, you know, top line people, um, they tend to go, you know, they'll, they may always start on the end of one. And now I'm the boom, that one, and da, 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 you know, whatever. They may always start, I'm like, okay, you, the last five songs you wrote, you started on the end of one. You try starting on the downbeat or start on two or start on the end of four um, and uh, see what happens. Um, the other thing is you can take a melody that you've written and move it over an eighth note and it totally changes its vibe. Uh, so... Um, but yeah, yeah, Lena, I, and, and I'm not talking about on guitar now, so you can write your melodies on piano. It doesn't really matter. Um, you can alternate. One day, write a melody on guitar, write a melody on piano. And keep in mind, melodies don't have to be diatonic. They can be, you can go wherever your ear t takes you. Back on the phone. <laughs> I'm on the phone again. It's great to be back on the phone again. Yeah, Gary, and I know you write, so um, yeah, it doesn't. Writing music will help you in reading music. It'll just be it's just like writing. Um, writing helps you with reading. Writing words helps you with reading words. You know. Do I suggest play it out directly from piano? Um, you talking about melodies that you write? You, it doesn't matter what instrument you play them on. Um, what what you could do is try to write you know write a melody on piano, and then try to re write it down on music notation, and then play it on guitar, or write a piano uh, write a melody on guitar and try to play it on piano. Um, doesn't really matter. It, it, write, your reading chops will transfer from instrument to instrument. Uh, if you're a better piano player reader, you'll be a better guitar player guitar music reader too. So um, those those will it's. Obviously, they're found on different places, but ultimately. <laughs> Thank you, Aslan. <laughs> and that's what we thought my... Oh, you know, I still have to upload that song. It's funny because I, I emailed uh, Universal Music Group, uh, my publishing administrator, and... Uh, Ask them, you know, what do you, do they have a preferential streamer? But I think I'm just going to go. Yeah, yeah, it's just slow. Lena, it'll be slow. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to probably do CD Baby. I'll upload the song to CD Baby. I didn't get to it. I'm probably not going to get to it this week. So probably not going to happen until next week. But I'm already on. I've, the song's mastered. It's all done. I haven't uploaded it yet. Um. But uh, I am um, already rehearsing 
haven't tried to record it yet because I don't have it down yet. But that song I was playing for you last week, um, that's my next, that's my next recording project. Um, as far as my solo music goes. So it's going to be a, a gypsy jazz piece, then a fingerstyle piece in standard tuning. Uh, then I'm not sure what, I may do a classical piece. I may do a vocal thing. I don't know. Uh, but that's kind of where I'm at with this. And I'm just going to release them one at a time. It's more expensive that way. Um, but it, I don't want, if, if I wait until I have 10 songs, it's never going to happen. Never, ever going to happen. And then the problem is, by the time I get to that 10th song, the first song will go, eh, I could do that one better, you know. And then, So I, I just know the tendencies. It's very difficult. So, um, All right. So, um, and then next week I will do... Uh, uh, you know what, next week I might do something where it's fairly like solid eighth note kind of stuff, but a lot of the same notes and then a change here and there, kind of like I just got from like Austin from this session. Not that you're gearing to do session work necessarily, but I think sometimes it's easier, like if it's something, something like... You know, something like that might be a real challenge to try to read. Um, and, and it's a good focusing. That kind of stuff is really good for focusing because you've got the same note over and over again. And then it jumps off of it for a second. You're like, oh, I got to I gotta stay. You got to keep counting. You got to keep uh, reading the notes. You can't kind of you can't drift at all in your mind. And so that's kind of like that that thing. And that's. I think it's good for focusing, and I also think it's just good for working on your reading chops. And, uh, you know, it could even be dexter, dex, uh, dexterity exercises for your left hand. So let's see here. Uh, um, all right. Any, any other questions? Anything? Oh, uh, Julian's a friend of mine. Sorry. I told him that he was the one I was texting. I said, get on there. So <laughs> I don't know if he's still there or not. <laughs> Julian is one of the guitar players at the churches. He's a very good guitar player, um, very good songwriter too. So we write with a lot of the same people. I met him through uh, one of the writers that I work with. He's best friends with one of the writers I work with. And someday the surprise guitar story time with Alex and Tom. Oh yeah. I know we got to do that, right? And that probably won't happen on a Monday. I'll, I'll try to do that on a, on another on another day. But um, yeah, try to figure that out. So let's see. And I, you know, what was Holly? Uh, I got rained on a little bit walking to Starbucks this morning. So. <clears throat> uh, So I was like, yay, it rained. Loved it. But. Oh, oh, caged. Um, I dealt with caged was the first 12 lessons I taught on my live stream. So if you don't mind watching the old live stream, um, I think. How do I find that? Oh, I know. Search across my channel. Daily lesson 12. Yeah, it was the first. So if you want to delve into the caged. Uh, oh, I, the first 12 lessons I did talked about it. Amazing, I had 3,400 views of that first one. Holy cow. And there it is. Yeah, it, well, it's funny because right now it's thunderstorms and raining all day in Big Bear. So in the mountains, they're getting rain. 
Which is good because that goes down. Although they're getting a flash flood warning in Santa San Bernardino, so that's not good. Um, yeah, weird. The first one really got a lot of views. One hundred and fifty-two likes. Dang, that's crazy. That was a, I, mean, I should go back and write. It was thirty-six minutes. <laughs> It's amazing how 36, 50, an hour 7, 51, 49, 57, an hour 3. Uh, amazing how eventually it just kind of got 123, 123 again, two times in a row. 106, 123, 124. So I, I, I got up to two hours very quickly on my live uh, stream stuff. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's fascinating how... The whole COVID thing just blew up my channel. 90 degrees. Wow. Yeah, way too hot for Wisconsin. That's just not normal. Yeah, we're going to hit 80. Eight. Today's our high is 80, I think. Um, let's see. What else? Any other questions? Wet bucks. Exactly. Starbucks. It wasn't that wet. Uh, well, I literally, I yeah, it was like a bird was spitting on me, more like. Puts laziness in action. Um. Yeah, that's true. Lightning without yeah, lightning without. Uh, Without rain is not good. And we get that sometimes too, but not very often. We don't really get thunderstorms here. Very often. Where I grew up, Indiana, we got them all the time. But it was always with rain. So, oh yeah. Yeah, so Lena, I think that will, uh, I think I did a fairly good job of explaining it, although I, <laughs> I think I was literally like drawing pictures and holding them up <laughs> at, that, at that point. It was before we had Discord. So maybe I will talk about it again. It might be a good thing to touch on again. Uh, not a bad idea to kind of re reiterate uh, the cage method uh, once again because it's it's really and people ask me how do I think when I'm soloing and it it is definitely one of the tools that I use when I'm soloing um, uh, because. Um, Oh, no. Right now, you can turn on bonus button from YouTube so you can get rewards from other videos. Do you know that? No, I don't know that. What is that? You do it to my videos? Oh, thank you, Lena. Well, that's a bonus. <laughs> uh, what is... Uh, let's see. You said... Oh, so wait. I want... I want... I want... Safari, hold on a second. Mm -hmm. right. I'm just going to open up one of my videos and see. Yeah, exactly, Dennis. His repetition is definitely one of the... Oh, you know... Did I monetize last week's... Okay, everything's monetized, okay. Um, oh, I never sent this out. I did new tools and I didn't send it out to anybody. Okay. What am I doing here? Uh, view on YouTube. So, from setting function, only for... So settings, saints, annotations. What? All right, auto quality. Yeah, I did HD. Um, 
okay. I'll I'll check that out. It's probably on my uh, the on my dashboard here. I just it's probably a thing I haven't. Subs only live chat. Yes, please. Interesting. Oh, that's interesting. I can do subs only live chat. Well, la di da. Oh. My friend uh, Sergio subscribed to me. That's fun. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Let's see. If I go to uh, see all of my subscribers, if I sort by subscriber count, no, all. I have I have one subscriber that has 1.23 million subscribers, uh, but that's Rachel Talbot. Um, she's a um, uh, she's a, a YouTuber, and she's the one that got me started. So she follows me because I follow her. Well, but, and she helped me with it. So and then songs by song notes by David Potts, he follows me, um, and then Two How, I don't know, I follow them too. I'm not sure. What those are too? How it looks like almost like the Chinese or something. Oh no, no, no! But that's cool. Oh no, this is uh, Thai. It looks like Thai, Thai ring. Oh, I know who this is. Oh yeah, no, I actually okay. No, I actually did some music for them. That's why they follow me. Okay, I'm like, what? That's a pretty big channel. So yeah, it's interesting. Um, Yeah, yeah. The so so uh, you know, and here's the thing. Maybe I'll take a break from the the reading thing. Um, we can pick it up again at some point, and I could do I could talk about because now that I have better graphic options with with OBS, um, and I can create some uh, graphics and things like that. We could talk about um, caves. I think I'm fairly concise and. Well reasoned. The funny thing is, is that I didn't know what I was teaching all these years was called the cage method. I taught it for years before I realized. It. Someone said, "Oh, that's just the cage method," and I went, "What do you mean?" And they go, "C A G E D." I'm like, "Oh my gosh! I never heard. I never knew that. You know, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I thought. I, I don't remember even hearing about the cage method necessarily. But somebody calls it that. Now it's. I hear about it all the time. It's kind of one of those things. Like you think about buying a certain kind of car." You never saw them before, and all of a sudden, now that you're thinking about buying one, you see them all over the place. So, um, if you want to challenge us on our re music reading, maybe reading with oh yeah, well that would be, ooh yeah, that's I I can read with a capo. I don't have a problem with that uh, because remember when I capo, I don't I don't think like if I'm capo to second fret I'm, and playing a G shape, I don't think G, I think A. So I'm actually my head is already in the correct key. Um, I. I don't transpose when I capo. I just, um, I just know my fretboard well enough. Um, and we are definitely. I mean, that was one of the plans was to, you know, maybe even go all the way back to lesson one. And we might do. Maybe we'll do that next week. Um, and I'll redo this uh, to be played at the on the second string. Two, three, four. Hey, I, hey, Holly. I changed guitar so you can take a sip. Um, you can't hear this because it's not plugged in, but so we have, you know, E, F, G. Actually, not a bad idea now that I think about it because it, it then it hammers home those that reading and it, it and you learn a new position. And we could also do it here, and we could also do it here, we could also do it here. And if you have a 30 fret neck, we could do it there. <laughs> um, so yeah, not a bad idea in that regard. A little bit of a change on what you said, Catherine. Um, um, oh, the oh the Beata book doesn't cover. I don't have the Beata book. I should make him send it to me. <laughs> he has replied to a couple of my comments on his channel, um, but uh, I'm trying to get him to because <laughs> he talks about how simple pop music is and I'm like well listen to ETA ETA's got some nice harmonies in there I'm trying to get him to, to do a like a like a uh, play this song kind of thing I'd love to be on his channel hey Jeff Osborne good to see you man uh, I'd love to be on his channel be interviewed for it uh, 
we had a good conversation at the NAMM show uh, a couple years ago, talking about his son and talking about Oud. Um, yeah, but Lena, I think I could probably reteach that. It's been what a year and a half now, so since I taught that, um, I could. I, 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 in fact, it wouldn't be a bad thing for me to re reteach it altogether um, and repost it. Um, let me see. Where's let me do that again and check again. look through my previous videos because I, I I did old my very first videos were about cage meth I talked about it a long time ago <gasps> yeah I did cage shapes I did riffs and things like that those weren't very popular like 400 views kind of thing uh, but then the cage method, the f intro to the cage method got 6,000 views. It's actually one of my, you know, and I, I mean, it's old. In fact, I'm playing a strat that Alex has now. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, but yeah, I can, I can, I'm probably going to have to watch those, but um, I, I, you know, and we would talk about one, uh, I don't. I don't think Jeff is. I think Jeff's been here before. I think Jeff's a normal. Oh, take care, Bruce. Have a great week. Okay, you're welcome, Bruce. Um, that's the other thing that's up on the Discord. Bruce is making me a uh, cigar box guitar, which I don't have. It's one of the few things I don't have. Pretty fascinating. He's posting pictures of it. Yeah, I've seen Jeff. I think, Jeff, you've jumped on a couple times. Not in a while, but yeah. But the, the Discord link up there, if you want to get these charts that here, like this one and all of these, all of these charts, <laughs> okay. Um, if you want to get any of these charts, they're all uh, at the Discord under Tom's, uh, it says Tom's Lesson PDFs and Live Stream Lesson List. Oh, yeah, that's the... Oh, so that's where the live stream lesson this is. It's been a while since that's been updated. But, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff up there. And I even put up, like, and I'll do videos, like uh, YouTube videos of jams so that you can practice your uh, um, uh, you can practice your um, bluegrass stuff. So, you know, we were doing the bluegrass lessons. Um, I don't even know if, like, those videos... If I go back on my live stream thing, um, if those videos are even getting views anymore, you know, I'm amazed. I mean, YouTube, they just have, must have billions of servers to hold all this stuff. Oh, my. Ugh, back is killing me. I didn't get any sleep last night. Dang it. Uh, Playlists. Let's see. What am I looking for? That's what I want. Oh, no, no, not play the content. There we go. Live. How far back are those? Oh, I can enter bluegrass in here. Yeah, we did a lot of live stream. Yeah, some of these have pretty good view counts, though. I mean, you know, five, six hundred, eight hundred thousand. Uh, let's see. Sort of blues. I'm gonna click on this. I just because I want to see if it's getting any no no views in the last 48 hours for the first one. So yeah, it's how much does this say I made on it? That's weird. Oh, because I think you guys tipped me, that's why. Like that. That's funny. Yeah, I'm going to take off too, Lena. So thank you. Um, let's, uh, so next Monday, um, we may, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I may start working you up the neck so we can re, kind of relearn those notes and then we learn them in a different position. So, um, or I may create um, some new EFG and teach you, ooh, that's what I'll do. I'll combine some syncopated reading with up the neck reading for EFG. How about that? Okay. And maybe we'll add ABC. 
nah, above it? I don't know. I'll decide. I'll decide next by next week, obviously. <laughs> so anyway, God bless you all. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, you're welcome, Jan. Good to see you there. Uh, Aslan, thank you for the for the humor. Holly, thanks for all the, the work you're doing there with all the, the copy-paste stuff. But you're better at it than I am, that's for sure. Yeah, everybody have a really good week. Um, I'll talk to you next Monday, Lord willing, and we will uh, pick up and we'll do something. And I will, I, I may come back and do some more cage method stuff. That's not a bad idea. So it's about that time. And I think it's really popular. So, all right, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.